Right, so we've spent the past couple of classes working through this packet on transformations. Um, we've got day one was the first, I don't know, bunch of pages up to page five. And then these were the conclusions about vertical and horizontal shifting, moving the graph up and down and left and right. And then there was some homework to do on that. All right, and then um, we worked on class uh, two, transformations day two. And this begins on page nine. And this was Friday. Friday we did this. And I was hoping that you would get up to here for the summary and then do the homework that comes after this um, for homework. But let's just discuss this summary together so we make sure everybody came to the same conclusions. So yeah, we are on page 15, page 15 of the packet. So we're going to have f of x be our basic graph, um, also sometimes called the parent function. c is going to be a positive real number. If you multiply by c, multiply your entire function outside by c, so this is post-operation, right? You're doing the f of x operation first, then multiplying by c. Does that stretch or shrink vertically or horizontally? It's, well, it, 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 it could do either. It could stretch or it, or it could shrink, but is it horizontal or vertical? It's vertical. Yep. Post-operation changes are vertical. Um, you can also think of it as outside changes. Post-operation, outside changes, those things are vertical. Now, if C is a number bigger than 1, when you multiply by a number bigger than 1, is, does the result get bigger or smaller? Bigger. So this is a stretch. If C is bigger than 1, then f of x vertically stretches. And the way you create that stretch is you multiply each y-coordinate by what? C, yeah, by a factor of C. That's what this C is doing here, because f of x is really just a fancy form of saying y, right? So this is like saying take every y-coordinate and multiply by C. If C is a big number, those numbers are going to get bigger, and if C is a tiny number, small number between 0 and 1, like a fraction um, that's smaller than 1, that's going to cause a shrink, right? If you multiply a number by a fraction, it's smaller. So this is going to be a vertical shrink when you multiply by a number that's small, between 0 and 1. And again, you create that shrink by multiplying each y-coordinate by a factor of c. You don't have to change c at all. You just are multiplying by c. c happens to be small, so it's going to make a shrink. And what happens if C is negative? It reflects over the x-axis. Yeah. Because you're going to take your y-coordinates. If they're positive, they become negative. If they're negative, they become positive. So you're flipping over the x-axis. So if C is negative, then the graph of, F of x reflects over the x axis. All right. So that seems relatively straightforward, as most post-operation transformations do, right? This is an outside change to the formula. Post-operation change always means vertical, and vertical things always do exactly what you think they're going to do. And now we get a little bit trickier. Okay. Now we have a pre-operation change. Now we're changing x before you apply the operation f. Okay, so if you do f of the quantity cx, is this going to cause a um, vertical or a horizontal stretching and shrinking? Horizontal, right? You're changing the x values. X values measure horizontalness. So you're changing the x values. So this is going to be a horizontal stretch or a shrink depending on the value of C. Now if C is bigger than 1, 
what happens to the graph? Does it stretch or shrink? It shrinks. Yeah. These pre-operation inside changes, horizontal changes to the graph, they, they always end up being the opposite of what you think they're going to do. So your intuition says, oh, I'm multiplying by a big number. That input's getting bigger. Your intuition says it's going to stretch, but it actually does the opposite, and it shrinks. And um, the, the digging in of why that happens, um, you hopefully you saw that in the activities before this page. That's where you were drawing the horizontal lines and saying, OK, if I want to get the same output, I have to, if I'm multiplying by CX here, to get the same y value for f and for h, you have to divide each x coordinate by c. Right? So you have to divide all the x coordinates by c. Or that is, you could also say multiply by 1 over c. Same thing. And if c is a number between 0 and 1, that's a small, teeny tiny number close to 0. You might think that it would cause a shrink, but because this is an inside horizontal change, it does the opposite of what you think. So this is a stretch. Should have put horizontal here. Horizontal stretch. And the exact same thing. You're going to divide each of the x coordinates by c. It's just that c is a really small number now, so it's going to go in a lot of times, cause, making a bigger number. Same thing, you could also think of this as multiplying by 1 over c. Dividing by c and multiplying by 1 over c. And if c is negative, what happens to the graph? Reflects over the y-axis, yeah. Because you take the x-coordinate, you take the opposite of it, and it lands on the other side of the y-axis. All right, so let's see if we can um, do a problem together where we use all this information. Um, let's see, which one do I want to do? Maybe I'll do this piecewise one. Okay. So here I have a graph of f of x. I don't have a formula for it. It's a piecewise function. But I've got five important points, and they're just connected by straight lines. So if I can figure out what happens to those five points when I apply my transformation, then I can just connect them with straight lines. So I only have to follow these five points. Um, and this should help you with parts of your project, being able to do this kind of problem. Project three that I gave out on Friday. All right, I want to graph g of x, which is 3 times f of 2x. So I've got five key points labeled, and then I want, just want to figure out where do those points go when I apply the transformation. And I might just graph it on the same axes, because I can't fit them both on my screen. All right, so g of x is 3 times f of 2x. So that 3, is that a pre-operation or post-operation multiplication? Post, yeah. I could also ask it by saying, is that inside or outside the function f? Outside, right? Post-operation, outside. So does that mean vertical or horizontal? Vertical, OK. So that 3 causes a vertical stretch or a shrink? Stretch. How much? How much do I stretch it by? Multiply what? The x or the y coordinates? Y, co y coordinates. If you're changing vertically, y coordinates measure vertical distance, right? So I want to multiply the y coordinates by 3. So that's what that 3 says to do. It says we're going to have a vertical stretch. You create it by multiplying the y coordinates by 3. All right, then let's look at this 2. Is that a pre operation or post operation? 
free. I could also ask, is that inside or outside? That is inside f. I'm changing the x coordinates, right? The x is the thing being changed before I apply the function f. So since it's inside, since it's pre-operation, is it horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. And that 2, does it indicate a stretch or a shrink? A shrink, because it's the opposite of what you think, right? So it looks like you're doubling, but it actually causes a shrink. And how do we affect that change? How do you change the x-coordinates or the y-coordinates to make a shrink? Divide each x by 2. Divide the x-coordinates by 2. So now I'm just going to do that. For each of my points, I'm going to triple the y-coordinate and half the x-coordinate, and that's going to be my new point, my transformed point. So if I tri uh, half the x-coordinate, so this is negative, oops, this is the point negative 6, 5, Okay, so I'm going to half the x-coordinate and triple the y-coordinate. I'm going to land at negative 3, 15. Negative 3, 15. I'm just going to call that a prime. You can call it a star or a hat, just saying, like, that's where a lands when I perform the transformations. Okay, so for b, that's got coordinates negative 2, 1. I'm going to half the x and triple the y, so I land at negative 1, 3. It's like right there. And I'll call that b prime. That's the place where b lands after you perform the transformations. And c, that is uh, 0, 7. And I'm going to half the x coordinate. What's half of 0? Zero? 0. And triple the y triple seven and you land at 21. There's my C prime. And D is at two, three. It looks like two, three, I think. <coughs> Half the X coordinate and I, so my X coordinate is going to become one and then triple the Y coordinate. So that's going to become a nine. So I'm at one, nine. That's my D prime, my new D after the transformations. And then E is at 4, 5, half the X, triple the Y, and you land at 2, 15. 2, 15, that's my E prime. And then I know that these things are connected by straight lines. Does that look like the transformations that I was looking for? A horizontal shrink and a vertical stretch? Yes. Okay, good. So today's the last day that we're going to work on transformations. Day three. And basically, oh, actually, we should do this summary together. I'll do this with you. And then um, you just have some activities to practice working with these all at, in multiple transformations at once. So if I have our basic parent function f of x, if I do a transformation where I have an outside multiplication, an inside multiplication, an inside addition, and an outside addition, and that parentheses does not belong there, just ignore that. It belongs there. a, b, c, and d are constants. Which of those constants a, b, c, and d move the function around? C and D. Yeah, they shift it left, right, up, and down. Okay. And which of those constants change the sh changes the shape of the graph? A and B. Right? They, like, pull it and stretch it and change its shape. Okay. Which of the constants affect the graph horizontally, whether by moving or changing shape? B and C, the inside constants the pre-operation constants. And which of the constants affect the graph vertically, either by moving it or changing its shape? A and D, the post-operation constants.
constants or the ones that happen outside. So the effects of the constants that change the graph horizontally versus those that change the graph vertically, so vertically we should say change as expected, right? If you have a plus D, you move up, a minus D, you move down. Um, if you multiply by a big number, that causes a vertical stretch. Multiply by a small number, vertical shrink. Changes just as you would expect, but horizontally, the change is the opposite of what you expect. We'll say it's the opposite of your intuition. And if you have to do more than one transformation, you always first change the shape of the graph, do all your vertical stretching and shrinking and horizontal stretching and shrinking first, then move it, then shift it around in the plane. So that's your summary. I'm going to have you work through the rest of this packet um, and finish whatever you don't finish in class for homework. <laughs>